Um, okay. What it'll do is it'll track an X and Y using the servos to keep this in the field of view. Uh, the drive base will actually drive toward it. And to try to keep it within a certain dimension in the camera? It'll try to center it as much as possible. Correct, okay. Um, and then uh, once it detects something with the lower IR sensors, it will stop it. The idea was you throw this or something colored on a wall, and it would run, run around until it uh, found it and ran to the wall. And so here goes nothing. Tell us a little bit about the... Oh, that's great. Yeah, well, it lost it. I uh, well, it does follow it. If you, you go a little slow enough to make it keep up, right? Yeah, I could change that. Tell us a little bit how you have it connected to the to the board. How did you communicate to the camera? How do you, how are you getting data in? Uh, it communicates to the UART. Um, it runs at a 11.5 to 100 baud. Uh, the the library for the scene bot doesn't actually like running at that speed, so I had to do a little bit of reworking on the register level, which is kind of unfortunate, but uh, I broke it out into a function, so it's not a big deal. Um, what it does is it sends out a request for a, a single packet of color data and then tells it, I want to track red. It'll send back data about... Uh, X-Men, well, X-Max. The centroid of the blob and then mm -hmm. the upper right-hand corner of the blob, I think. So you, you get both position and size if you want it. Uh, plus some information about how sure it is that you're actually tracking red. Uh, from that point, I, I just essentially do a proportional controller. It says, okay, you're this far from centered. I want you to add this to the control and then move your servos and your wheels accordingly. It's proportional to distance. Um, any kind of motor speed, or it's always at the same speed on the motors? No, the motor speed's... Uh, variable as well? Variable, yeah. They, like I said, it, it goes back and forth to try to keep this in view. Okay. Um, if it detects that the servo is offset, it'll try to turn so the servo can go straight. It's The drive base's main goal is to keep the servo straight, and the servo's main goal is to keep the ball in view. So. Do you have a GUI that's running this when you turned it on, or it's just your straight C code, your raw C code you're using? It's just straight C code. I, I have absolutely no communication between the computer and the robot. One more time, just for um, posterity's sake, and then you're good for today. You can show us the integration with the wall following next week after you've had time to tweak the parameters a little bit if you want. Okay. It always looks up there for no apparent reason. For no apparent reason. So although you... Okay, what happens if it loses the wall? Does it randomly wander? Uh, oh, no wonder it's different. Yes, it randomly wanders. It uh, has a habit of pulling sliders. <laughs> It has a habit of pulling out its wires. Okay, so he's looking for the wall. On the wall. What's the in the inches like? What should it follow at what distance? About that distance. So it's about eight inches. Is it a proportional control? Uh, it's actually full PID. You're making my heart sing. <laughs> Good job. Uh, what happens at the corner? It depends on whether oh. or not it catches it. Oh. <laughs> it's not catches. It's the corner. <laughs> <laughs> what, can it make it around the corner? It's using only sonar? No, it has IR. Um, IR and sonar. If it had come out far, far enough, it would have caught, uh, lost the wall. <laughs> a couple of Okay, why is he driving to the wall? <laughs> Do you have code written to handle corners? Like, uh, what happens if it gets triggered on the front and on the side? Uh, it will move. Let's see, I think... Front would subsume side, okay. so it will move away from the corner by backing away. Okay. Um, it should actually go in the doorway. So it's going to go into his office? My office is mine. Uh oh, uh oh! <laughs> Goodbye, robots! <laughs> Each one of these color nodes is a node, as it were, which can either be a destination, an end point, or a starting point or something that passes through in order to get to the next node. Mm -hmm. uh, the black lines are the potential paths it can take, and it actually does use the black lines if it loses the colors, but those are sort of an auxiliary sort of a thing. It doesn't actually use the color at all. I also just wanted to show off that line of color actually didn't work. Uh, you tell it where it is starting, where it should go, and it uses a basic pathfinding algorithm to find the best way to get there. It does that by starting in one place, and say I want to go from green to yellow. I think the way it works at this point is that it will detect 
that it needs to go first to orange, then to blue, then to yellow. So the via, it always goes through the via points. It would never just cut straight through the white. No. No encoder, so it'd get totally lost. Oh, that too. But okay. it, it looks before it leaves. It makes sure it can see the color it wants to go through before it'll actually go there. Okay. The idea being that um, no matter where you tell it to start and where you, you tell it, then it'll always find what it considers to be the optimal path. And what kind of algorithm is it using to do that? A modified Bellman Ford. Okay. Um, it's just a pre-populated Bellman Ford, really. So it knows exactly where everything is. It just searches the matrix to find the shortest distance? Yeah, kind of. Sense, yeah. Okay. Uh, the big problem is I couldn't use like an A star or an extra because recursion is really bad on microcontrollers. Okay. <laughs> the stack size isn't large enough to really encourage lots of recursion, and the data structure support is pretty limited. So, no recursion. So, uh, what it will do is you stick it on one point, it'll search for the color that it detects it needs to go to next, and it'll start going there. If it loses the color midway, and it happens to be on a line, it'll shift the camera center and look down, because that's where it expects the color to be, and then continue the line follow-up. Okay. Uh, if it gets completely lost, it'll stop, and then do a camera sweep, if you can't see anything, turn it about 60 degrees, does another camera sweep, but then okay. continuously until it finds something it likes, which may or may not be one of the color nodes, because it's being finicky. Okay. So, yeah. Are you ready to show it to us? If it is a green, it says here on the mm -hmm. display, start from green, which it is, so go for it. Uh, might be down to the end of Perfect. Start from green. Mm -hmm. Go to green, or red, or orange, or brown. We'll totally go red. So it does a quick camera sweep. So it always does this. Oh, is that why it's scanning so much? I was about to ask why is it scanning so much, but it's because it can't find it yet. Yeah, apparently my values for red aren't that great. It decides it can't find red. That's because I assume it's a different environment that you actually wrote the algorithm in. Correct. Probably. It's, like I said, it's a very, very finicky little. Let's try green or red. Sure, we're ready to paint on it. So we tell it now. Yeah, does your GUI actually show anything? Is there anything I'm getting here? Or are you just pushing the button? Yeah, oh, it is showing down. Okay, I see. Start it. from red. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it catches that confirmed twice. Like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's right. It's, it's default is from green. green from red. Okay, I see it. So, let's see. Did I make green? I'm done. I make green. I'm done. Yeah, there you go. Awesome, good job.